Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Church Security Answer Man. I am so glad you're here. I am excited about this topic that we're talking about today, not because it's necessarily a fun one, but it does get you going just a little bit. So ending a gun battle during a church service quickly. That's what I want to talk about. A little different perspective today because, you know, oftentimes we talk about getting prepared and and in our what course of fire we're going to practice on, those kind of things. I want to talk about an overall, and you might even look at this as somewhat of a mindset, but it's really about overall preparation for being ready to end that church service gun battle. Should you ever have one, uh, end it quickly. So we talk about, do we, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about ending a church service gun battle quickly is looking at the shooting in White Settlement, Texas. You know, this gunman got into the church and this gun battle breaks out and this security team member is doing all the things that we're talking about today and he takes care of business. A lot of people say this gun battle lasted just a little over four seconds. So once the suspect started shooting, this security team member uh, drew and took care of business and took that gunman out. So we want to look at those components today. What did he do or what do I believe from my studies that you and I need to be doing? Maybe a little bit different perspective today. This episode is brought to you to us by the Church Security Academy, and they've got some great training over there. Uh, I suggest you go over there and take a look at it, churchsecurityacademy.org, or if you're on YouTube, a link in the description. And certainly I'll put that link wherever I can in our posts that you might see on Facebook or other locations. But go check out churchsecurityacademy.org. They have got some good stuff over there for you, a good platform for getting some uh, training for your group. So let's talk about this idea of handling uh, or ending a church a service gun battle quickly. How can we be ready to do this stuff quickly? Well, and, and first of all, in, in simple terms, you got to be quick. You got to be ready to take care of business. You got to be quick. And how do we do that? What's some things that we can talk about that we can do that? You know, and, and part of this today is that I'm talking about is where, you know, if you're looking at this seriously, that if you, we all tend to say, okay, we're on duty security at our church. And if something happens, I'll take care of it. But let's think about it for a minute. If a gun battle happened at your church during a church service in the church, are you really ready? I, I'm just, no judgment, but I'm asking you the question, are you ready? Because that's really what it's going to come down to is you being ready to go. And there's a lot of stress, a lot of strain, a lot of things involved in this situation. So are you ready? So you got to be quick. That's first of all, that's what we're talking about. That's one of the components of ending that gun battle quickly. Should you get involved in one, you got to be skillful or accurate. We certainly can interchange those terms. You got to have some skills when it's time. This idea of us, uh, you know, shooting our gun every five years or every 10 years, and it just sits in our holster all the time and we don't do anything, that is not seriously going to help you. You're packing it around. That's great. And there is some things that I've mentioned before. You know, there is a component to just challenging a, an active shooter pulling your gun out and challenging them with it and telling them to stop. There is a certain amount of those active shooters that will stop their process and maybe even kill themselves. We've talked about that before. But what if it doesn't stop there? You've got to be doing more than just carrying a gun around with you and shooting it once every five or 10 years. And I know it's been longer than what you think since you've shot that gun for most of you. And I, you know, I've done live seminars and I talk to the people and they say, oh, it's been five years, but I'll bet it's been 10 since they shot that gun. Again, not, nothing. I'm not saying bad. I'm just saying you and I are talking frankly today. And, and I think that I'm right on that. It's been way longer than you think since you shot that gun. You got to be skillful, accurate, skillful and accurate. And how do we do that? Let's talk about that. You must be calculated or deliberate. If you want to end a church service gun battle quickly, you've got to be calculated and deliberate. 
So we might even say cold and calculated. That's what we're going to talk about here in a minute. First of all, we're getting right to it. You must be quick. And I'm talking about you need to be the one to deliver first. We don't want to be the second one to shoot our gun. We want to be the first one. We don't want the bad guy or bad gal to be the first one to shoot. You know, in a related, I was looking at some material and I got to thinking, you know, we invest a lot of money in police officers, uh, training them to be good with their firearms, shoot a lot, use lots of ammo, training time, wages, all of those things, sending them to academies. And some of them still do not strike first and they end up being killed or injured badly or injured. And so we need to talk about being the one to deliver first, that we're moving quickly, we're practicing drawing, we're shooting quickly. And how do we do that? Honestly, how do we do those kind of things? Uh, we've got to be uh, uh, practicing. We've got to be spending some time doing that. And we've got to be in good shape, all of those kind of things, so that we can deliver first. It's not going to be a joke. It's not going to be just a story that I'm telling somebody when it begins to happen. So I got to be ready to deliver that bullet. I got to be ready to be the first one to fire. So I'm moving quickly. I'm thinking quickly. I'm practicing drawing and I'm shooting quickly. That takes a lot of work. We've got to be doing uh, draws out of our holster, all of those kind of things that we're going to certainly talk about here. You got to be skillful and accurate. That means you deliver again that bullet first and you're ready to hit center of mass target, the biggest part of the target, the chest area, wherever that is, whatever your biggest part is, you got to be ready to deliver that hit, that bullet. And, you know, and this could really be other things, too, I don't want to discount if you're not armed at church. You know, there may be a way for us to deliver this uh, way to end some kind of violence. You could be a big stick or a big chair that you pick up. You know, there's other things here that this still applies to. We're talking more specifically about a gun battle, but this really applies to if I don't have a gun and I'm trying to take somebody out or maybe they have a knife or a big stick. You know, it still applies to that kind of stuff being ready to go, if you will. So I need to be skillful and accurate, which means I'm delivering the first blow, if you will, the first bullet in this process. And next, I got to be calculated, deliberate, some people might say, you know, cold and calculated. I've got to be able to do what is necessary. I've got to be ready to move towards, run towards a threat. I've got to be ready to stop the threat and survive. And I'm set on that. That's important stuff for us to be thinking about. So how do I achieve quick, skillful, and calculated? Some of this is common sense, but sometimes we forget. So I want to remind you because I care about you and I care about your programs. And I don't want to read about uh, uh, issues within the churches where we failed to stop someone when security was present. So let's talk about how we do these things. How do we achieve quick, skillful, and calculated. The first one, as far as I'm concerned, is you got to be, you got to be using your firearm. You got to be practicing each stage of this process. So it's the drawing of the firearm. It's how you carry it. It's how you draw it from that. And then it's how you shooting so that you're comfortable with it. And it's about your mindset. That's really what we're talking about here. So, and I'm drawing off of my own experience. When I went through the police academy, we had to stand in front of a mirror and over a certain amount of time that they gave us, I think it was a, a couple of weeks, something like that, or a week, we had to draw 5,000 times while standing in front of a mirror. So that's just what the requirement was. The gun's unloaded and you want somebody to verify that too so that you're safe in your house. And we're going to practice drawing that firearm because that's an important skill to help you be quick to deliver that first shot downrange towards your uh, armed subject to stop that gun battle quickly is be able to get that gun out of the holster very quickly. And in fact, it affects a couple of these for you to be able to do that. Practice shooting your firearms a thousand rounds, I think is a great way to start and splitting that up between standing, kneeling, 
and laying on the ground or laying on the floor. So we might call it a rollover prone or prone position, but where you're ready to deliver that, whatever is necessary. You know, we may end up finding ourselves in a situation where we're having to shoot under pews to somebody to shoot their feet because we can't get to them otherwise. Maybe they're wearing body armor. And the way for us to start taking them down is to get under a pew or under a row of chairs and shoot their feet and their legs to start taking them down. So we need to be able to do this standing. We need to be able to do it kneeling behind some chairs or pews. We need to be able to do this uh, from a laying down position as well. And honestly, you know, don't forget about, I don't have it listed in my uh, bullet points here, but don't forget, we really need to be able to practice moving and shooting as well. So there's really even more than we're talking about here. So, but I'm really talking about the initial boost, the initial throwing something down range towards this person, being the first to fire, the first to shoot, the first to hit your target, those kind of things. So, and you know, so we got to be able to move, which means we need to stay in a good enough shape that we can move and we need to be able to have that mindset that we are going to go towards this. We talk about it with our team leaders all the time. One of us has to be on the hook to know in our mind that we're going to go towards that target. I uh, want to recommend to you that you uh, check out training. We have the churchsecurityacademy.org we talked about at the beginning of this session. And I want to encourage you to do your own practice. You don't necessarily need my training or their training, but we want to be talking about this stuff. And then you need to have application. And I want to push you. I'm, I'm starting to get more, a little bit more pushy about some of this because for you, I want you to be prepared and ready to take somebody out, have the mindset, have the skills, and be ready to go when the time comes for doing that kind of situation, for dealing with that kind of situation and ending a gun battle, ending it now, quick, four seconds, like they did in White Settlement, uh, Texas, uh, at that church. So take a look at this next video. And uh, I think it's applicable for what you need or what you've been uh, looking at. And uh, leave me a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate it if you subscribe to what we've got going on here so that we can communicate and you can get the updates as soon as I put them out. Thanks for joining us today and take a look at this video right here.